Hey, what's up YouTube, Alien Rides here, and today we have one of the channel's most requested videos of all time. About a year ago, some people got a glimpse of a crazy custom electric scooter in one of my videos. Since then, that scooter has been in a few more videos, and we've gotten a lot of comments for more info. A lot of comments. They wanted to know what it was, see more ride footage, and know how it was built. They wanted to recreate it for themselves, but without the creativity of the mad scientist behind it, it's not going to be an easy feat. My buddy Randy is coming over today, and we're going to take an in-depth look at how he built the Goblin Custom Electric Scooter. We hope that this video inspires you to build something awesome as well. Subscribe and let's ride. Right, guys we've got the goblin and we've got the creator of the goblin randy what's up everybody how's it going my name is randy gillum and this is the goblin it's uh part surfing on concrete part uh electric motorcycle yeah it just feels like you're you're on this surfboard and you're steering with your heel and your toe and uh the heel and toe feature comes kind of kind of from like a, a snowboard kind of fit, feel and if you're going down the mountain, you're carving. And so I just wanted something really powerful. Uh, so I started looking up electric uh, motorcycles and uh, electric motorcycle conversions. And I saw they were making hub kits, hub kits from uh, Q, QS Motor. And uh, QS Motor there uh, found them on Alibaba and uh, just started piecing it together. I was already making scooters for five years, kind of with this build on the front end. So, so let's talk about how you got started. So, I mean, you just started with a normal slower scooter, like a full frame? Yeah, I started with a, like an 800 watt uh, scooter. It was from uh, Super Scooter Sales, some guy out of North Carolina. He basically makes this whole front frame. Uh, comes with this lead battery. It was fun for the time. I think it was like 2000, uh, 2013, 2013, and just got really familiar with building the front part and, uh, and then they started coming out with the 18650 batteries. And then we got rid of the LED batteries, the big heavy ones, and got into lighter, higher voltage ones. And then as soon as they came out, just started modding it and adding it more and more. So I was, I was modding those scooters and then we were on a base gate run. And I had a trailer, we had a, a subwoofer, we had a generator, and we had some some beer and we were just riding around and we were going up Bernal Heights and the, the original motor, uh, imagine this part without all this, started smoking and uh, we had to pull off to the side and it completely fried all the wires. All the wires were just fried and it was smoking and then, uh, so that was the end of the first version. And then it went on Alibaba uh, or AliExpress and we just looked up, uh, looked up replacement parts and started seeing this company, uh, QS Motor, and they came out with some electric uh, motorcycle hub conversions. And then I was looking at, uh, you know, shock upgrades and things like that. And I started seeing the pictures and it kind of looks like an extended version of uh, the scooter build of the middle or of the, the first one. You have the, the frame in the back and it holds the big wheel and they have these tiny shocks and so I was thinking if I can get a electric motorcycle hub conversion, mount it. We found also this uh, rear arm and this rear arm, you can extend it. And so basically this scooter had the same bolt on the axle back here. I couldn't find anyone that did this before. So I just had to use washers and uh, just add one washer at a time uh, to make it fit. And so we got enough washers, got enough uh, C-clamps and bolted the rear end of the scooter to the frame and then found a matching uh, width of uh, electric uh, motorcycle hub mounted it to the back i got some motorcycle suspension arms 
Uh, normally these are supposed to be mounted this way. And so the trickiest part was trying to get this from twisting. Because uh, without this, if you can see this cement epoxy. Cement epoxy. If you look up on Amazon, this stuff is amazing. If you break your front fork so or anything. You got on both sides. Cement epoxy and this will is like super uh, save the day. Stuff. Yeah. This just, yeah, it feels like cement. This is rock hard. Yeah. And it flexes too. So you won't have to worry about cracks. Nice. Uh, so this bolts on, this is the original frame here. So I just extended it out, got some extra uh, motorcycle suspension. Uh, this gives me more flexibility of how to mount it. So I uh, stuck one here, stuck one on the arm. And normally on a motorcycle, this is supposed to be up here. Yeah. And you can tilt it back and forth to uh, get a feel of suspension. Originally right here, it was too, there was not enough of a, a triangle, I guess, to keep it from twisting. Mm -hmm. So raising it up helped it get a lot more stable. And then, uh, and then right here, these C-clamps definitely need this because it, the frame twists right here and this actually shifts sideways. And Structural so, C-clamps. Yeah, so i uh, got these clamps on, got some wooden boards just to keep it from twisting. Now it's really good. Feels really solid when you turn and you lean, moves everything awesome. together. So you can just kind of see the battery under that deck. That's that's a huge battery. How many volts are you running? So that's a 84, 24 amp hour battery. I got inspired by the uh, Dualtron extended battery mount. I saw some videos of them going 80 miles, or no, 80 kilometers. And uh, 80 kilometers, and they all had these packs. And I was wondering, what are these things on the front of their uh, their uh, fork and um, just looked at some pictures and then got some some mounts on the back so I can add another, this is another 84 volt, 17 amp hour battery. So got some bicycle clamps. This is just like a standard bicycle for the frame of adding another uh, water bottle. And then got some stainless steel plates, just kind of screwed everything into it. And it's just supported here at the bottom. That way, this keeps it in place. And then just some Velcro straps. So altogether, you got 41 amp hours, is that right? Uh, so now it's about 40 amp, 41 amp hours uh, at about 84 volts. If you ever look on YouTube videos, the guys that are doing wheelies on those big uh, 20 inch, 24 inch BMX, these are the exact handlebars that they use. And uh, I was looking for something that was a wider stance. That way, when you're, when you're carving, you could have a real good feel on where the balance is and that instead of like kind of right here it's hard to to carve low i think this one is made by se racing you can find it on amazon these guys are awesome they make really awesome handlebars uh, a lot of new scooters come out with the same mounts so if you're riding with any uh, scooters with a similar mount just unbolt it look up se racing get one of these handlebars and you'll just feel a lot more confident uh, these are like a downhill um, mountain bike they kind of just keep your hands in place. Okay. Uh, that way you can put your hand on top and not worry about the handlebar slipping. It's almost like um, you're kind of just like lightly pressing on it because most of the steering is in your heel and toe. Yeah. And uh, this one just gives you a little bit more confidence. That way your hand's not gonna slip off if you're carving. That's sweet. So you've got, this is a half twist throttle? Yeah, half, uh, half twist. I love this style. This one, uh, for me, I tried the thumb at first, but it was a little too jerky. Uh, the finger one, I, I can never get into the finger one. Uh, but with this one, I like because this one, you could lock in your four, your uh, three fingers here, and then you kind of pull down. So your wrist steers it instead of this, and it feels a lot more controlled. Key ignition, uh, different speed settings. So this is scary, medium, super slow. Oh, one is... You're about this. One is, yeah. one is scary. Yeah. It's cool. It's uh, it's good for options if you want to let your friends ride um, before them sliding off and <laughs> never seeing it again. Yeah. And then, so you've got different brake levers here too. I guess the rear brake's a lot bigger. Yeah, so this is actually off a motorcycle uh, hydraulic disc. And the discs are 330 millimeters. And they work awesome. I mean, if you ever wanted to stop and um, you could stop faster than you can, you can think. So they work really well. Huge it's, disc, huge rope, huge caliper as well. It's a four piston caliper, really heavy duty. This one's just for, uh, you know, racing bikes. 
same uh, bolts as a uh, road bike right here. You, said you were able to mount this whole handlebar setup normally with the existing scooter stem? Yeah, so, uh, this is like a standard size. I'm not sure what this is, but I think all the Dualtrons, they use this, this size. You've got a pretty sick light here too. Oh yeah, this one's, uh, there was a, a, a look on this black Harley and it had this rectangle headlight. And I was looking at AliExpress also for like motorcycle headlights and I found it and uh, just wanted this, this look, let me turn it off so that the camera could see it. But it just has this bar LED and I was just a, a fan of having that LEDs across. And you have this, is this like a mirror? Yeah, so this is just a laptop screen. It reflects red. And I just wanted something where it's not blinding everyone on the street. But um, what actually was pretty cool is when I put it on top, it reflected the light kind of lava red. So it was lava red because it caught all the, the top beam. And so it made the bottom part kind of red and kind of fit with the whole scheme of the, the build. Yeah, this is, this is all wires. Uh, so this is all, I tried to use the heaviest gauge. These are our server power cables. I just wanted to make sure that there's no amps being lost. And this runs all the way down back into the, the main battery and then just taps into the middle. Yeah, these C clamps, they just made a world of difference. If, if your shocks aren't going straight up and down, you really need something to keep the frame from twisting. So this is the, the battery from Hercules A uh, Technologies. And uh, 72, so you can charge this at 72, but you can run up to 84. And then uh, 25 amp hours. Uh, I wanted the, the fattest connections, so I used these. These hold up to, yeah, so these are connectors. And so they use, uh, I think they're like a really good type of nickels, uh, silver. They hold up to 600 volts, 175 amps. This one runs, I think the BMS maxes out at 100 amps. This one maxes out around 80. Uh, so I just wanted the connectors to be able to not uh, you can carry push, any. You can push 180 amps total for both batteries. Yeah. So tell me what happened with this uh, front fork here. This is, looks like it's custom. Oh it's yeah. Extra, well, it's the original fork, I guess. This part here is the original fork? Yeah, this part's the original fork. So the interesting part about this huge hub, it lifted uh, the back angle. And so I also had to lift the front. Uh, the rake just felt really weird. And so I had to lift the front up so that it's not tilted like this and more like this. And so I just got some, uh, I think these are iron bars off Amazon, uh, drilled in some holes and pushed it, uh, pushed it down, I think about three inches. Yeah, about right here. Nice. And three inches was enough so that the scooter felt straight. Otherwise it was really, the handlebars just, it wiggled too crazy and it was hard for it to feel stable and confident over uh, 30 miles per hour. Yeah. And so making it a little higher also made it really uh, a lot more stable. Yeah, so you can see, steel... uh, okay. yeah, so each side has three steel bars. And a couple bolts also, I guess. Got... These are all, yeah, just bolts and washers. Bolts and washers. It's about a million washers on this scooter. It's awesome. Just extend it a little bit on this side. We've got this, uh, Racing slick up front too. Yeah, racing slips. You can find them on Amazon. Just look up, uh, I think this is a 6.5 inch rim. And the slicks made a huge difference. I used to have some knobby wheels on it, the standard knobby heels. Yeah. And uh, when I got the slicks, it just felt so much more connected with the road. So then you got these, these lights, these just for style, for visibility of the boat? Uh, these are interesting because if you, if you hit it or if you brake hard, uh, it actually pulses out red. Oh, nice. And so I was looking for something for uh, just a little bit more interactive if I'm accelerating or decelerating, then people see me coming a little bit brighter. Yeah. Uh, is, is this mud guard here on the front? Is that custom or is that? Yeah, this is just another mud guard. It's off a uh, mountain bike. Uh, but yeah, just a mountain bike uh, frame. They come with these mounts. Everything's all just get a screw and get a washer and see how you can uh, attach it. Nice. Let's see, so you got a pretty sick damper here too. Makes it a lot more stable, I guess. Yeah, this made a huge difference. I couldn't take this scooter over 20 miles per hour until I got this thing on it. 
And uh, the tricky thing about this one is it was totally custom off a Honda motorcycle. And so I had to look for something that would clamp onto this frame. And somehow Hondas, they have a, a similar kind of extension. Yep. And then I had to measure out this part with the washers and it just barely clears, if you can oh, yeah. see. Man, it's <laughs> it's just barely there. enough. And so it totally worked out, made all the difference. If uh, you don't have a damper on your scooter, I highly suggest uh, trying one out, see the difference. It'll make you feel a lot more uh, confident. This folding mechanism, that's all stock. Is the original folding mechanism? This one's all, yes, this one's all stock. I did have to drill in. These are uh, hardened, hardened bolts so that it's a little, bit, a little bit more stable. The previous ones were kind of wobbly. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, just kind of pops up. Locks into place. Ooh. Let's see, what do we got next? We got this controller. This thing is huge. This is a Sabaton, S-A-B-V-O-T-O-N. I don't think they, they're around anymore, but a couple of years ago, they made really good controllers, really efficient. This one's rated at, I think, 96 volts at 200 amps. And so this kind of matches uh, this QS motor. And this one runs uh, rated at 72 volts, but can run up to into the 90s. Uh, and this is rated at 5,000 watts. So it can go up to the 20s uh, once you start pushing it in the 90 volts. Yeah, that's a ton of ton of watts you're pushing. Yeah. And this tire you've got on this, this is really cool too. So you used to have actually a bigger tire and it would just looked totally insane. This is actually even a thicker tire, but it's a little bit less tall, right? Yeah, this one's, the previous one was 13 inch by four inch. This one's 12 by five inch. And I was looking for something that was a smaller diameter because the other one was way too top heavy. And so it always felt like the scooter wanted to tilt out. Yeah. And uh, this 12 by five makes it, it just feels like you're actually in snow and you just have this nice gradual carve. And so when you're going heel toe, it just feels way more, way more predictable. It doesn't feel like the scooter wants to lean over. Uh, also the wider width really made a difference with the way the angle you can lean over. The tread pattern just looks sick too on this. It's a little <laughs> bit dirty right now because I've been off-roading earlier, but it's an amazing tire. And then we talked about this kind of rear fork here. You bought that separately, I guess. That's for a motorcycle? Yeah, this part is if you just look up uh, motorcycle uh, rear sway arms or swing arms. Um, this one I needed an adjustable one. So this gives you a few options right here. So you can extend it out or bring it back in. Uh, this also gave you some adjustable mounts that you could put the, uh, the shock towers. Uh, so just having some flexibility made a big difference. Plus this manufacturer is totally different than this hub wheel. So I needed something that, you know, you can adjust this all comes apart that way you could just get it real tight nice and then so you stand well we're gonna see some videos of you riding this in the video but yeah you have one foot there in the back yeah so this kind of tilts off and you actually want your toes off to the side uh, because actually when you press down then the whole scooter goes this way and if you just lift up an inch then it wants to go this way it's 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 so balanced that you just have to move your foot an inch this way or an inch that way and then you can just carve. You don't even have to put pressure here. Actually, all the steering is right here. And what, this is just like a metal, just sheet of metal that you made? Yeah, this is, uh, this is actually off uh, an amplifier. I ripped off the case and put some grip tape. Uh, I just needed something to cover the back because this was all open before. That's off an amplifier. This is off of a laptop. Yeah. <laughs> I love how it's all coming together. That's amazing. And so you also have a trailer. How does the trailer hooked up, hook up? Oh, so the trailer hookups back here in, on the right side. Oh, just through here. Yes. There's, there's so many, I don't know, the way this whole thing came together, it just was so lucky that there was a hole right here. Yeah. And it was exactly the same size bolt that would need to make the connector real stable. Uh, and I got a Evolve skateboard bushing. I had an old one around and I just pushed it right here. That way it has some flexibility. And so the trailer is pretty sweet. What do you have in there? You said you had a generator in there before? The scooter is built for holding a generator. The first run was a couple of weeks ago when we had the first uh, you know, post-corona ride. 
I just wanted to make sure that it was stable because that was the first ride. Uh, so I put the battery packs, I had this in the back, I had this off the scooter. So all the batteries were on this fat gauge wire into the scooter right here. And I had a big speaker in there we were playing some music, but I just wanted to make sure that the scooter was stable. Yeah. Uh, and it seemed very stable. So next time we could take a generator out with no issues. Nice. How many amp hours? So you had a bigger battery in the trailer? Yeah, we had a, another battery. The battery was uh, 92 or 94 volts at 24 amp hours. Yeah. So I had a 92 volt, 24 amp hour, and then I had an 84 volt, 24 amp hour. And now so you got together. the extended battery also. And now we got the you extended could, battery. You do a triple battery. Yeah. Uh, and the whole reason of getting this, this style hub motor, uh, this one has 192 pounds of torque. And so I asked the engineers at QS Motor, um, you know, I wanted to pull some weight. So I had this whole, this whole build focused on bringing a scooter. So this could tow 500 pounds up a 40 degree hill. Damn. And that was just because we wanted to have batteries or a generator, you know, more uh, charging power or, or beers with our ride. That is a lot of torque. Yeah, so for this, I mean, you've just conquer every hill in San Francisco pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Just straight up the hill. And what's the highest you've gotten this thing up to, top speed? Definitely over 40. Over After 40. 40, everything just feels like, it doesn't feel made together yet, but okay. it's getting closer. I mean, the first uh, the first few months of this, this whole thing wiggled. Yeah. This wiggled like crazy. Everything was just, didn't feel right, didn't connect. Um, but it took about a year to get all the washers, get all the right parts. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of, I mean, obviously this motor will do way more than 40 miles an hour. Yeah. Probably. It's rated for 60. It says 60. Uh, I, I mean, mean, at 96 volts, I think it's going to do more than that even. I mean, we could tilt it off the ground and you can kind of see it accelerate. Yeah. That's awesome. So yeah, I guess there's some more work to do to kind of stabilize everything. If you do want to hit higher speeds, but yeah, I guess it's more about kind of just having a good time towing that trailer and yeah. just carving through the city. Having a good trailer, towing it, making sure you can get up every single hill. That's what this is for. What other future plans do you have in store for this? Any ideas of where you want to take it next? Uh, I want to build a modular version of this. Um, I'm imagining hopefully, you know, 3D printing with metals will become a lot more easier. And so this whole part will just be one print. This whole part will be one print. And then the frame, the front fork will be one print. And that way you can take it apart. You can, you know, travel with it. Just want something that's more compact, kind of like a, a Lego that you can ride. That was always my dream since I was a kid. And uh, eventually once things are, you know, customizable, you can set up pretty easily and then go from there. That'd be awesome. So we've had a lot of guys on the channel who love the scooter, really want to build their own. And if you had one piece of advice for somebody who wants to build their own Goblin, what would you tell them? Uh, get cool with the people on AliExpress. Uh, the people at QS Motor, very helpful. This lady, Judy, uh, she's been helping me the whole way. She responds within a day uh, and just wants to understand what I'm pulling. She asked for the weight, the hills in San Francisco. Let them know that you're building a, a frame this long and this big. And they actually know their stuff and their parts really well. They can tell you battery recommendations. So yeah, just get friendly with the people on uh, AliExpress and they'll, they'll help you find the right parts. All right, shout out to Judy at QS Motor. Thanks, yeah. Judy. Thanks, Judy. You've been a good help. Up. Oh, also Luna, Luna Cycle. Those guys have been awesome at uh, building batteries. This battery pack has been from lunacycle.com. They have a, a ton of uh, controllers, throttles, um, awesome battery builds. Their battery builds are really, really top notch. So Randy, what was your inspiration for building the Goblin? The uh, inspiration came from about eight years ago. Uh, I used to ride these board bikes on Heavenly. And a board bike, if you can imagine, it's a BMX frame, but it's lower. And instead of wheels, it has two short snowboards. So one here, one here. And I love the feeling of going down the mountain, uh, riding like this, but I would actually step on the frame and use it as a snowboard. So you had the, the BMX feel, but you can carve and you can drift. And so I just 
was trying to figure out how to do that with the scooter and uh, and in order to do that with a scooter you, you need a really long frame so you got to have you know a stance that's wider than your your shoulders and the current scooters uh, you know back in 2000 2013 didn't have a long wheelbase and so I just been trying to figure out how to extend it out and uh, AliExpress they started making these extended uh, motorcycle adjustable uh, swing swing arms and so uh, this this part was able to make this short part just like the feel of riding a board bike down a mountain uh, and now I don't have to go to Tahoe I can just ride around the city and get that same feeling see anytime them, yeah you see them on the tickets yeah nice and so the goblin was born thanks so much for watching guys if you like this episode and want to see more of the goblin please like subscribe leave a comment all that good stuff that's all we got for this episode we'll see you next time